everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Stefania. I'm a content creator, cosplayer, and also an aspiring actress. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about my trip to New York Comic Con. This was my first time at New York Comic Con and I had such a blast. I applied for the content creator badge and I got accepted, so I was able to go all four days, but I could only go three, unfortunately. But three was just enough for me, to be honest. Saturday was crazy. I'll definitely have to tell you all about it. So if you wanna see my experience at New York Comic Con, keep on watching and I will show you guys what I picked up at the convention. Let's get to it. So like I said, this was my first time at New York Comic Con. I did not stay in the city. I commuted all three days. Well, three days that I went. They went on for four days. I didn't go Friday. I went Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thursday was such a great day to start. I got in early. got to go through the VIP entrance, and the show floor was so empty. I have never seen a convention, a show floor, where it was just empty. And then they let in general admission people, and then it started to crowd up a bit, but it wasn't that bad. Thursday did not sell out, but Thursday was literally just enough where it tired me out. Like, New York Comic Con is so huge. It's the biggest convention I have ever been to. I have not been to San Diego Comic Con yet. And by the end of the day, Thursday, I was so tired. It was only the first day and I was already exhausted. Just wait until Saturday. So Thursday, I dressed up as Supergirl from the comics and I wore my SAG pin, which I have here and I forgot to put on at the beginning of this video. So I'm gonna do that right now. Perfect. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> So I wore my SAG pin because I am all for the SAG strike, I am in support of them, and I am also aspiring to join the SAG union in the future. I do have enough credits to do so, it's just a matter of paying the membership to joining. Anyway, I was in cosplay that day, I took a few photos, so I will leave those pictures right here so you guys can check them out. That day was really an introduction for me for the convention, I walked around a lot, I was very comfortable because I was not wearing heels. I had these shoes that were attached to the suit and they were just very comfortable, except one foot was like <laughs> a little bit smaller than the other. I don't know how, next time I order something like that, I'm definitely gonna go like half size up in my shoe. So that's a note for anybody getting kung fu shoes or like shoes attached to the suit, always size up at least half a size. That day was really for me to get a lot of signatures in the artist alley because it wasn't as busy as the weekend. I knew it wasn't gonna be that busy, so I took that as my opportunity to get signatures. I got signatures from Lucas Werneck, Mark Brooks, who did an amazing Rogue cover that he signed. I got other signatures from Terry Dodson, who is one of my favorite artists. I absolutely love his artwork. And I got Todd Nock to sign my Spider-Man 2 comic, which is the prequel comic to the Spider-Man 2 game. So I will show you guys the comics that I got signed right here. There were other comics I wanted to get signed, but I wasn't able to see all of the artists that day. And I knew if I didn't get them Thursday, I probably definitely wouldn't be getting them on Saturday or Sunday because those are the two busiest days. Also Friday, but I wasn't there Friday. I also got to see Ian McGregor at his panel and that was honestly just a chill, fun time. He got to talk about his motorcycle trips around the country, around the world. He taught us how to make tea, proper tea. I don't drink tea, so you know I'm not really gonna use that information, but it was great to know either way. He was just a really fun person to listen to and his stories were just so great. The actors at this convention obviously could not talk about any film or TV project because of the strike going on, which is okay. So that was my Thursday trip. I will insert any clips that I have left out so you guys can check out what that day was like. It's an art that's maybe not as, as, as known, or, but so I'll tell you. The best way to make a cup of tea is to make it in a teapot. So you would get your teapot, and then you have to, I can hear my grandmother in my head, you have to, <laughs> heat, you have to heat the pot. And now, I don't know why, I, I, there's different theories about why that is, but anyway, you get the boiling water and you pour it in the teapot, 
rinse it around to heat the pot, and then you pour it out. Then you put your tea bags in, and then you add the water, right? And you have to leave it for more than three minutes. Less than three minutes, you get a good color, but you don't get the good taste. But after three minutes, you get both, and that's what you're after. And then, when you pour the tea in the cup, there's another rule in Scotland, anyway, that you have to put the milk, because I would always drink tea with a bit of milk, not a herbal tea. I've seen people put milk in their herbal tea, which is strange. <laughs> but in a proper British cup of tea, you would put the milk in first, a little splash of milk, and then the tea. And I think that, that uh, is the way it is at its best. So no sugar, no honey? I don't do sugar or honey, no. No. <laughs> Sweet enough, you know? <laughs> so then Saturday came around and that was the biggest day of the convention. I dressed up as 90s Rogue, of course, and I purposefully dressed up as Rogue that day because I got to meet Lenore Zan, the voice actress for Rogue, and she also signed a comic that I will show you guys. It's like my new favorite comic ever. That was a really awesome day for me because so many people wanted photos. I took so many awesome photos. I met up with my friend, we took some photos outside the entrance of the convention and those came out amazing. I will show you guys right here what they look like. Literally my favorite photos ever. I got to meet so many mutuals, so many people I finally got to meet in real life, and I also got to meet some fans of mine, which was awesome. And a few of the mutuals that I got to meet are my friends over at Comic Book Direct. They run a new comic book store online where you can pre-order trades, comics, and subscribe to titles. And they were kind enough to give me a link for you guys. For the first 100 people to subscribe, you guys will get a 20% off discount on your first order. So definitely check that link out up here. I will leave it there or in the description down below. Comic Book Direct is an awesome online store for your comic books, so definitely check them out. That day was so crazy that I had reservations to see Chris Evans and the Guardians panel, but <laughs> I got stuck taking so many photos that I completely missed those panels. But honestly, I am not complaining because the photos that I took, they were awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret, which is also not really a secret, but I'll tell y'all anyway. So if you're cosplaying, the best place to stand, I was told, the best place to stand for photos is like the main entrance lobby of the Javits Center. It's right outside the showroom floor. But what was really awesome was that I was standing just, you know, in that floor area on the bottom floor, just standing there walking around, you know, seeing all the cosplays. And photographers came up and they wanted to take photos and all. So somebody from the Marvel social media team came up to me and asked for a photo for their page. And I was like, hell yeah. And then we saw a really tall gambit and they were like, we need that guy in this photo. And then we ended up making some content and took some photos. So I will show you guys the video that Marvel posted that has like 6 million views now. And here is our photo on the Marvel page. I think that's like the second time I've been on Marvel's page, which is pretty awesome. I have worked with Marvel's social media team before, so the person that was taking the videos and the photos actually knew who I was because we had to sign this waiver and put our Instagram handles so they could tag us. The video came out so well. They posted it that night and I had like just come out of the shower and my phone was like blowing up and I was like, what is going on? And I checked my phone and they posted the video and it. <laughs> It was awesome. So like I had mentioned before, I had actually met Lenora Zan, who is the voice actress for Rogue, and I got her to sign something that I will show you guys. But first, I want to show you guys this photo that we took together. She is such a sweet person. When she talks normally, I mean, it's not like her Rogue voice she's doing, but her voice just sounds like Rogue anyway. And I literally hear her voice, I'm sure this goes for everyone, but I literally hear her voice every time I read the comics. And that goes for all the voice actors. But someone actually got this photo as well, which is now my lock screen on my phone because it's literally the most wholesome photo ever. And I just like cherish this photo because it's like, it's such a wholesome moment that somebody captured and I'm gonna like cherish it forever. So yeah, that's my phone lock screen now. So I have the X-Men issue where it's the yellow cover, David Nakayama yellow cover of Rogue. 
and I brought that to get signed by Lenore and here it is. She wrote, <laughs> she wrote, hey Stefania Sugar. She was like, that sounds so good. I was like, oh, doesn't it? Um, and then she wrote, love from one rogue to another because I was dressed as rogue that day. And then she wrote Lenore Zan, AKA Rogue. And I actually have a stand for it, like a little display thing for it. So I'm gonna put it back in there and uh, keep it on display until I get David Nakayama to sign this because I really want him to sign this comic as well. So Saturday was crazy. I know I've said that a bunch, but Saturday is a crazy day. It was just packed, like the show floor. I didn't even try to go down to the artist alley because I know those lines were crazy. But yeah, that was my Saturday. I was so tired. On the train ride home, I was just exhausted. I got up every day for the con at like 5.45 a.m., I think. I would take like the six something train to go to get there at like nine, I think, or 8.30. I don't know. It was very early. <laughs> Either way, it was so early I was waking up, so I was very exhausted. I mean, I had adrenaline in me that day, but I was very exhausted on the train ride back. And I had to do it again the next day, which was crazy, but I did it. So then the last day, Sunday came around. That day, I wasn't going to cosplay, but I decided to do like a casual rogue. I went in my 80s rogue suit, but I wore my sneaker wedges instead of my green boots because those are much more comfortable to wear. And I also wanted a little bit of height because I'm short. And no wig. I decided to just attach my white bangs to my natural hair and it worked. I put on one of those like cargo jackets, cropped ones that I had and it honestly worked. I will show you guys some photos that I took as well with that outfit. So this day was more of like walking around the show floor and seeing if I wanna buy stuff or not. I wasn't planning on getting anything signed. I didn't bring any comics that day cause I was like, I'm just gonna make it a casual day. Just see what I wanna buy on the show floor, that's it. And I went to go look at comics at this one booth. They had like a mix of bronze, silver age, current comics, and they were in a 20% off bin. So I was like, all right. So I went to the X-Men section. I went to look through and all, and I found my second greatest holy grail comic. I'm sure some of you have seen it on my social media page, but if not, I will show you guys what that comic is. And I bought a few more as well that I will show you guys, but this one's very special because this is Uncanny X-Men 266, the first appearance of Gambit, first full appearance of Gambit. And Chris Claremont was at New York Comic Con that weekend. So of course I went and I got it signed. Guys, this is such a special comic to me because not only do I have the first appearance of Gambit, but I also have the first appearance of Rogue, Avengers Annual 10. I had gotten that at my first ever comic convention, Terrificon, back in like 2021. I was dressed as Rogue and I bought the comic and I got it signed by almost everybody that worked on that issue. And now I have Uncanny 266. Don't just love how life works like that. <laughs> that comic actually was originally 255 because I lifted up the the label, the sticker right before I went to get it signed by Chris. And it said 255 on it. I was like, "Damn." It was covered by a sticker that said 175, which is like, "Damn." But I got it for 20% off, so I paid 140 for it, which is honestly a really good deal because the comic is in a pretty damn good condition. And it's also a newsstand edition, and they only made, I think, 15% of the comics that they produced, that Marvel produced the year this came out, was newsstand. So that's pretty damn awesome. These are the other two comics I found, Uncanny 236 and Uncanny 237. I also got them signed by Chris. But another comic that I was so ecstatic to have found was this comic. X-Women number one, which is just a one-shot issue of X-Women, written by Chris Claremont with art by Milo Manara, who is an Italian artist who is known for his very scandalous art. So this collaboration was really something. So this comic came out in 2010, and when it came out, it was pretty damn scandalous. Like, you can see on the cover what the women are wearing, and 
how much skin they're showing. And you know what's awesome about this comic is that I was literally on a podcast with my friends Chris and Chandler who run the X Reads podcast and we did a show talking about this comic. And this was like maybe five weeks or six weeks prior, I wanna say, that we did that show. And then I found this comic at the convention. And of course, I also got it signed by Chris. And what was really awesome was that he actually went through the whole comic and talked about it and was talking about the artwork. And if any of you guys know Chris Claremont, he loves to talk. So it was just an honor to listen to him talk about a comic and get to have a great conversation with him, especially when like the line is long, and you're, you kind of feel bad for the other people, but you want to take that moment to just embrace it, take it in, you know, you never know when it's going to happen again or if it will happen again. So yeah, this was a really great comic to find. And if you have never read it, I definitely recommend reading it because it was a really good story. I enjoyed it a lot. And towards the end of the day on Sunday, there was a very, very short line for the Spider-Man 2 photo op. So I got in line for that and took some photos. I will show you guys here what they look like. I also posted them onto my Instagram, but they didn't have any more bags left. And I saw so many people with bags around their shoulders throughout the whole weekend. And I was like, I want it. They were huge bags too, but um, it's all right. No worries. I still got to take the photo, which was pretty awesome. I stopped by the Heroes and Villains booth where they had this whole X-Men collection. I was actually wearing my Heroes and Villains Rogue backpack and when I was walking through and looking at all the other stuff, one of the reps from that area came up to me and was like, can we take your photo for our Instagram because you're wearing our backpack and we would just love to have that on our story. I was like, yes, of course. So I will show you guys what that looks like as well over here. It was funny because one person took my photo for the story and then somebody else from the booth actually came up to me and took a photo so I was like oh yeah sure I mean I already took a photo with her but that's cool <laughs> it was a really cool booth like I loved how they set up everything they were sold out of the x-men t-shirt so I wanted to get a rogue one but they are available on their website the whole collection so I will definitely be ordering from them sometime in the near future they also had this really cool Xavier varsity jacket man they have so much awesome stuff. I also have the matching wallet for that backpack too. I'll show you guys. You know, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description what that backpack and wallet look like. So needless to say, New York Comic Con was such a huge success this year. I had such a blast and I cannot wait for next year. I literally cannot wait. Like that's how awesome this convention was. If you ever have plans to go to New York Comic Con, definitely go through with those plans. If you've never been to this convention, definitely go because this was such a huge experience. You meet so many awesome people. You meet so many artists, vendors, cosplayers. It's crazy. And photographers as well. If you're traveling by train, it's very easy to get to the convention center. You just get off at Grand Central, take the number seven subway to Hell's Kitchen to the Javits Center, and you're there. You walk a bit, and you've arrived. So now that I have New York Comic Con checked off, I would love to get San Diego Comic Con checked off as well. That is at the top of my convention list. So one day I will be going to San Diego. Don't know if it'll be next year. Who knows? Life works in mysterious ways, I will say. There are a ton of people that show up on Saturday. It's like crowded. So if you ever feel overwhelmed, I'm pretty sure the convention has areas where you can just cool down and relax. I think every convention has that. And always try and go with a friend because it's just more fun being around friends instead of walking alone. I even though I've I walked alone majority of the weekend because my friend and I on Thursday had like so many separate things to do and Saturday I was there by myself but I did meet up with friends and hung out with them for a bit but it wasn't that bad I just definitely recommend going with friends it's more fun with friends I'd say so that is all for this video I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about New York Comic Con and my experience again I highly recommend going to this convention so thank you guys and I'll see you next time Bye.